Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast, 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Polaris, and a special guest on today's episode, Cam Inman from the Bay Area News Group. Cam, thanks for joining the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. It's uh it's time to hit the road again for another 49er road trip. Yeah. How are you feeling about this 49ers team as they come off their bye? Uh, I think I'm feeling, I'm still pretty confident in them. You know, the, um, I don't think the 5-0 and start was a mirage. And the offense obviously was clicking the way it was at the end of last season. And then, you know, the, those those losses in Cleveland and Minnesota, they were coming down to the wire. They were tight games. And then Cincinnati, they just ran into a really good team. I think um, I, I predicted back at the the last Super Bowl that this this season Super Bowl would be the 49ers against the Bengals, and I think the Bengals show that they're back on track for it. And I, I don't think the 49ers are that far away. They obviously still have you know talent everywhere, um, but that doesn't necessarily going to translate to wins. You know, there's been so many instances in the NFL where there's dream teams and they fall flat and nobody's ever called this Niner team a dream team. But if you look at the depth chart and the lineup, you'd say, okay, these guys should be just going everywhere and winning. And I expect them to win Sunday in Jacksonville because I just, I think that the buy was, uh, you know, it's a cliche to say it was needed at at the perfect time, but I think it kind of gave everybody a chance to recharge, recalibrate, um, you know, look and see what they can do better. And, Uh, they're going to have to go cross country now and beat the NFL's hottest team. Well, anticipation has just been building for this Sunday's matchup. All right. So Lindsay, the last time we checked into the podcast, the team had only gone through their bonus workout on Monday. What are some significant updates that have come out of the past couple practices? Yeah, I think in terms of just health wise, signs are pointing in the right direction. Uh, We saw Debo Samuel out on the field in Monday's bonus practice, and he's been a full go Wednesday and Thursday, we'll get the official word from head coach Kyle Shanahan later on him. But again, just all signs pointing to Debo Samuel being completely ready to go. And then also just as significantly, all pro left tackle Trent Williams returning to practice on Thursday. The portion of practice that the media is able to actually observe is very brief. But the fact that Trent Williams is out there is a positive sign. Uh, Head coach Kyle Shanahan said that His injury was not showing up as a high ankle sprain, but it was more than a typical low ankle sprain just because of his injury history. Either way, he's tracking in in a positive direction. Well, Lindsay, what is it about the 49ers being fully loaded and fully healthy that could help them overcome their streak this week? I think it's kind of what Cam said. It just was a perfectly timed bye week because the 49ers were a little banged up uh, coming out of week eight, and they did need that time to just rest and recuperate. And you can definitely tell that there is a sense of First of all, just good energy in in the locker room and a little bit of urgency. Everyone knows the talent that is on this team. And exactly like Cam said, they saw what they were able to do when they play complimentary football in those first five games of the year. And they just want to get back to that. And it's about executing on the field. And that next opportunity comes on Sunday. With that being said, the 49ers have no easy feat this weekend. They're facing a Jacksonville team that has a favorable streak heading into this contest. They're also coming off their bye, and they're taking on the 49ers on their own home field. So, Cam, can you shed some light on what the faithful should expect from the Jaguars this Sunday? Yeah, I mean, the last time the 49ers were down there was two years ago when Trevor Lawrence, their quarterback, was a rookie. And, you know, he's doing better, as you'd expect a guy in his third season. Um, But to combat that, the 49ers, I can't wait to see how Chase Young does in in his 49ers debut, um, rushing the quarterback opposite Nick Bosa, Um, kind of get those Ohio State teammates going again. And and then just to see how the whole defense responds, because um, besides Trevor Lawrence, you know, with his passing skills, you got Travis Etienne, who he's really the, the dynamic catalyst of their offense, the way Christian McCaffrey is to the 49ers being a rushing and receiving threat. So, um, I'd imagine Trevor Lawrence is want to get the ball into his hands as fast as possible so he can avoid Bosa, Chase Young, Armstead, Hargrave, all those guys. Um, but I really want to see how Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw respond because 
I think they're coming off a, a subpar performance, and I think Dre's getting healthier. And, and these guys, it's they're kind of the leaders of that defense because they can, you know, patrol so well sideline to sideline and, and, and bring some violence to that defense. So I think it's going to be fascinating to see how they play those two guys. Um, the Jaguars have a good tight end in Evan Ingram. They have good receivers in Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley. So um, it's a great test for the 49er defense. And um, I think that's it, it's to win to win well in the NFL, you need a great defense and you need it on the road. And so that's that's what we're going to have to see on Sunday. Yeah, just as you said, an efficient Trevor Lawrence and a consistent run game has helped the Jaguars offense shine in the first half of their season. But looking at the other side of the ball, Cam, can you break down Jacksonville's defense and how they've been able to help the Jaguars secure five straight wins now? Yeah, I mean, I think that's more the talk of how great the Jaguars have gotten off to. The, they've won five in a row. What have they? I think they've won 11 of their last 13 regular season games. So um, it, it's a I mean, remember, they used to have like some kind of corny nickname like Saxonville. And <laughs> it's they have this, uh, you know, this linebacker, outside linebacker, rusher, Josh Allen. And. The guy has nine sacks, and it seems like every week the 49ers play some defensive end who, I mean, obviously they played uh, T.J. Watt and Miles Garrett, but then you, you go to Minnesota and there's Dan- Daniel Hunter, and then uh, Cincinnati has a couple guys with Trey Hendrickson, and now you got Josh Allen, and it's just it's the NFL. There's always somebody coming. Um, so it's like they don't have all these big-name guys, but it's a defense that's been molded by Trent Baalke, who a lot of Niner fans will remember as the general manager here uh, through 2016. And Trent also believes in having a big, strong defensive line. Um, he loves those like long arm defensive ends to get after the quarterback. And I thought Brock Purdy described it really well this week when he said, it looks like on the Jack, when you look at the Jaguars defense, there's a lot of space out there. But then all of a sudden there's tight windows and that results in deflected passes and interceptions. And they've got a lot of interceptions. So um, Brock's obviously got to overcome that, especially in the fourth quarter um, and, and see what they can do. Yeah, we've heard it from the 49ers. And like Cam said, Brock himself, just how aggressive Jacksonville's defense is. And they're able to cause those turnovers. So, Lindsay, what kind of preparations does Brock Purdy and the 49ers need to take in order to ensure a clean game on Sunday? Yeah, they've got a tough test again uh, coming up on Sunday. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars lead the league in takeaways. They're tied for the most with 18 11 interceptions, so definitely not a unit that the 49ers are taking lightly. But really from what Brock Purdy said yesterday, it's really just about going out and executing on the field. Um, He's got to be just very smart in the decisions he's making. Um, But I do think that having Debo Samuel out on the field is also going to be a big help for Brock Purdy. It's just another weapon that he's able to utilize, and we will see how the offensive line comes together. Again, Trent Williams is tracking in the right direction but unclear if he is going to take suit up and take the field on Sunday. I think that's going to be a big thing. Aaron Banks will not be playing, so it's going to be John Feliciano in at that left guard position. So it's going to take a little bit of contributions from everyone just to make sure that that offense gets up and running. And then you always obviously want Christian McCaffrey to just hit the ground running and get that run game going. Let's dive a little deeper into the 49ers defense in this matchup. They'll have Chase Young in the lineup as he makes his debut with the team this week. But Cam, the 49ers, they've been preparing for this game knowing that they're needing to make some adjustments from their past three performances. And perhaps we should expect the defense side of the ball to look slightly different this week. What are you wanting to see from this 49ers defense on Sunday that could help the unit get back to shutting down offenses like we've seen earlier this season? Yeah, I think they just they need to attack. They need to have a cleaner communication, less missed tackles. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, you know, Steve Wilkes is moving down from the coach's booth to the sideline for the first time this season. Um, a place where we saw Robert Saul and D'Amico Ryans communicate well with the defenders when they were the coordinators. I, I, I don't know if that's how big of a move that necessarily is. It's obviously caused a lot of media attention this week um, because they just they need to try to shake things up somehow. And, you know, obviously they've invested a lot on the defensive line to get after the quarterback. And but it really is about stopping the run because, you know, the Niners run defense, that's been their foundation for years. And 
and that doesn't just revolve around the linebackers. I want to see these safeties get more involved and make more plays because the Niners have some really good safeties back there uh, with Hufanga and Gibson. It's been a little quiet the last few weeks. So um, I think it's about time those guys make some plays. And uh, But again, it all starts with stopping the run. And as much as we want to see Nick Bosa and Chase Young and everybody get sacks on Lawrence, those guys have to seal the edge and not allow anybody to run right around them the way that they have or screen passes right over them. All right. Well, while we wrap up this episode, we like to share some bold predictions with our guests. So, Cam, do you have any bold predictions for this contest? Besides, is it bold to pick that the 49ers are going to go cross country and beat the hottest team in the NFL? Because I think that's bold enough. And I have the 49ers not just doing it, but I think they're going to score 30. They're going to get back in that 30 point range again. So, I have them winning about 30 to, I think I had like 30 to 17. Well, that's an exciting one. Lindsay, do you have a bold prediction for this matchup? Yeah, I think that 49ers run defense gets back on track. I think they hold the Jacksonville Jaguars under 50 yards. Let's go bold. All right. Well, faithful, tune into the game this Sunday. The week 10 matchup is set to kick off at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Sunday, November 12th on Fox. But that will do it for today. Thank you so much, Lindsay and Cam, for joining me in this update. Don't forget to follow First and 10 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Be sure to turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, faithful, for tuning in. 